Hello there. My name is Kemi Tony Akimumi, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Making Marriage Work. This is a show where we answer some of the questions we get from some of you, our friends, online. And today, again, we'll be taking another question, and Mr. Kunle Emmanuel Adebayo is here to help me with the question. All How right. are you doing, sir? Yeah, I'm very fine. Very fine, well. Good. So our, our question today is uh, reminds me of uh, the other series uh, where you you have taught us a number of things. Uh, mm. That's the series that uh, the before you say I do. I do. Right. Yeah, and if anybody's listening to me right now, if you can find your way, you can uh, follow the the tags, the Instagram links, the whatever that um, yeah, is on the screen right now, so you can go and check those things out. So, but this question actually um, reminds me of such those mm. teachings or those uh, uh, episodes of before you say I do. So this guy says that I mean, yeah, I think this is a woman. Yeah, he said, "How do I cope with a husband?" who is not ready for the responsibility of marriage and family life. Not ready. I feel stuck and drained emotionally for all the wrong things he has done and his immaturity as a man and leader in the home. Mm. He said, this is not the marriage I prayed for. This is, mm. this is so touching. Right. Mm, she didn't pray. There are, yeah, she didn't pray for such yeah. a marriage. Mm. And there are lots of young women you know, ladies who are in situations like that, they are married to a man who they wish will do better yeah. with marital responsibility and with family life. So sometimes you can't really answer questions like this without asking some questions how you got here, how your relationship was, how your courtship was, how you met, how, how did you come about that decision to marry him? Because there must have been some things you saw in him for you to decide to want to do life together with him. And right now, here you are, come, you know, this is not the marriage you prayed for. So, were the signs there? Did you ignore the signs? Did, this is not to judge or blame anyone, but really we have to look at those, you know, aspects too. That how did you, why did, how did you get here? Did he change or was he a good man? Was he responsible during relationship? Was he matured? Was he emotionally stable? And then something happened and currently from everything you have painted mm. of him, he's yeah. not a leader, he's not taking up responsibility mm. for the marriage and for family life. So from what she has painted, it looks like a man from our own definition of a man who is not meeting up to our expectations. The man, you know, a man not meeting up to the, to the picture she has of who her husband should be. Mm. Now she's, she's drained, she's emotionally, you know, distressed. She's, we don't even know how much of effect this is already having on her. So how do you cope with, with such a man? The first thing is that, yes, you still have a life. Mm. Yeah, the, the marriage is, is just a part of our life. It's not, it's not our life. Marriage is not life. It's a part of it, but a very significant part of it. Because when marriage works, it positively influences practically almost every area of life. Your mental health is stable, your emotional life is balanced, your physical health is doing well, and your, you know, your spiritual life also is flourishing. And then your health, you know, because from psychology we have seen that there is a link between your marital stability and your health. It's been researched that those who live longer, who have less health challenges, are people who are enjoying, enjoying beautiful, intimate relationships, you know, with their, with their spouses. Um, so, the first thing also is back to communication, which mm. I want to believe she might have done a couple of times, to want to talk to this person that now you have to leave behind childish behaviors. And then somehow too, we have to look at how that guy grew up. People grew up and we have been formed some of us have been damaged, some of us never had models, we never had role models, we never had anyone to tutor, to mentor, you know, we never had a blueprint, you know, of how family life should be, or how marriage yeah. should be, and then society forces you into marriage, you are 30, you are 35, they just believe because you are 35, you should be married. And it's more than the age, because you can be 35 and not be psychologically ready for marriage. Yeah. You can be 35 and not be 
you don't have an understanding on the concept of what puts a marriage together. It's not just about your age or having a thriving career or, yeah. you know, looking good and having all the biceps and the six packs, mm. right? So it takes, it, 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 it's a lot. So this man also may not know. He may not know any better. Mm. Yeah, he may not know. And that's why usually when you hack some ladies, they saw the, they saw the signs, they saw the red flags, they kind of saw, but they ignored it. Maybe for desperation, well, I don't want this one to go, let me share marry, mm. who we'll sort out herself, will be good, and then, now you are married and the reality is begin to dawn on you that, oh, I didn't notice this, oh, I saw this, but I didn't know it would be this bad. But so, back to the question, you are already in that situation. She didn't yeah. mention if they have children, and yeah. I think they will, for her, for her to be concerned that it's not ready for family life, like, which yeah. means, you know, maybe not even being a present father, not concerned about the well-being of the children, their growth and all of that. So, you won't allow the irresponsibility of another person to stop you from shining, to stop you from living and thriving. Because for you to know, then the onion is on you to deliver on what you also know. Yeah. Because for how long will you wait for him? But mm. communicate with him lovingly. Look for events that can, you know, mentor, that can, that can inspire him, that can expose him to more knowledge, you know. Encourage him to attend meetings like that. Send him the flyer, send him the link, prayerfully, you know, nicely talk to him, you know, and then and model what you want. Model the things you know that you expect because he cannot deliver those things you know until he becomes the person who can deliver it. So you can't just expect him to deliver. He first of all has to become another person. Mm -hmm. And in that becoming, a lot would happen. Knowledge, exposure, mentoring, love, understanding, patience, you know, and somehow to empathy because if he knows better, he will do better. So yeah. if you look at him, his upbringing may not even be anything to write to him about. So where do you expect him to have seen a template or a model from that he wants to use in his own marriage to, to build his own marriage or family life? However, that's also not an excuse to say, nobody raised me well, so I'm also not going to raise my children well. That's not an excuse. Yeah. The moment you decide to get married and have children, you must do everything to be responsible, you know, for that life. So, encourage him, expose him, you know, prayerfully talk to him, let him celebrate him in the little things he does, in the little effort he makes, celebrate him, let him, let him have positive feedbacks from you. If the criticism will come, let it be very, very, very constructive because you don't want to damage him further. Right? And then the most important part is that for you who knows the little that you know, you also don't want to say because your father is not doing anything, I will also throw my hands in the hair. No, you also have to then double up and begin to model. So he begins to see you modeling. You know, you model leadership to the children. The way you talk, the way you treat them, you plan and you are involved. And then he sees that and gradually he begins to appreciate your effort and then can come along as you continue that conversation and communication with him to let him realize he needs to man up, he needs to develop, he needs to build the family that he has started. Because not everybody has those leadership qualities. Some have to deliberately go out to seek a mentor to hold their hand and help them thrive. Mm. Right. Okay, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, but I just want to look at it from another angle. Yeah, from this angle that say, um, let's. What if the lady is actually uh, expectations are actually too high of this person? Mm. Uh, maybe, for example, the person is uh, maybe our own definition of being. Uh, responsible in, I mean, family life and all that is uh, right. overboard. Like, right. man, why are my children not going for holidays uh, in every summer? Or why all those kind of stuff? Do you understand? Yes. So maybe, so why, 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 why? What if it's like that? So, so what will you, what will you say to that? All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Akuni. And I like the hangu that you have expanded it to to say that every, every one of us, everybody who is married came into marriage with some expectations. And sometimes those expectations are not clearly stated. Even if they are clearly stated, 
there is no way you would clearly state all the expectations you would have of your partner in marriage. But we all have expectations. We all have the ideal in our minds. We all have what I want my husband to do, what I want my wife to look like, the things I would be happy if he or she does. But then, will it be fair to expect a 90% from someone who is delivering at a 20%? That's when your question comes very, mm. you know, interesting to say that it is true some people can actually have high unreasonable permit my word expectations or demands of their partner and to them that is a picture of who a leader is mm. that's a picture of who a supportive husband or a supportive wife is so that person is living in the dreamland because you cannot expect so much and the reality is not delivering it because you, your expectations should match the person you are expecting such from. So you, you can't expect so much of someone who cannot deliver it. Mm. So will it be fair on that person? No, it won't be fair. It will be you that you are not being realistic with your thoughts and demands. Mm. And so for someone like that, then it is for that person to look in what? Because how long will you keep hurting yourself? Because you, are, you, are, you, you desire something from this and repeatedly the person has failed you. So it's for you to then flip it. Perhaps this person doesn't have what it takes. And that was why I mentioned earlier that it is not just about delivery. It's about this person, first of all, becoming the person who can give, you know, mm. those your, who no, can those, meet those, those demands, those demands, values. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah. So it's a lot in between. And that's why we keep encouraging that couples talk about their issues. Couples who are having challenges, they talk to a counselor, they seek help. They seek some social support. They seek some emotional support because there are some so there are some issues in marriages that shouldn't lead to a crisis, yeah. you know. But when there is nobody helping them to decipher issues or understand or clarify, it becomes a humongous, you know, yeah. monster that has the capacity to tear yeah. their marriage apart. So expectations must be balanced and reasonable. And you must have seen, if those expectations are important to you and very significant to you, you must have seen during courtship that this person has those values, has those interests, has those beliefs, those ideology, and those, you know, lifestyle that can deliver those expectations. Mm. If you cannot see that at, that at the courtship level, do you expect a miracle <laughs> to happen? Yeah. No. I get it. No. So making it, looking for what you want during courtship and making a choice to stay or to walk away, then that's very, that's what we should focus on. Yeah, that's, 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 awesome. that's awesome. I think that's, that's, hmm. that's balanced this, this stuff. Thank you very much once again. You're welcome. The, Thank you so much yes, too for yes, being so, here. All right, well. So that will be it for today. We'll see you at the next episode of Making Marriage Work. The African community can change by impacting one African family, one at a time. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.